Hello and welcome back to The Health Bridge. This is Dr. Pedram Shojai here with a dear friend of mine who I am so happy to have with me in Southern California today. Uh, we are in studio and this is going to be really exciting. Uh, Robin Euclid of Your Healthiest You is uh, wonderful. You might, you might have seen some of the cooking segments we've done on Wealth.org with her. Uh, she's delightful and she's done some wonderful work to help people get real with food. And without further ado, I know she's got a book coming out in January and all this kind of stuff. I actually get to have a relaxing conversation <laughs> with her here in California. Welcome, Robin. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And it's weird because I'm usually in the kitchen with you and there's coconut oil flying everywhere and I've got 15 components of food going on. So it's nice to just sit and hang out and get cozy. I know. Now I kind of feel guilty. I feel like I put you to work every time you come down. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what's the shopping list? What are we preparing? What am I making? What am I prepping? But this is kind of but nice. Could, could you blame me? I mean, your food's no. delicious. I'm, you. you know, selfishly. It, it is. I'm, it, it, it is. My food's really good. It just is. I don't know what I do. It's like the magic touch. I actually hosted a Passover Seder recently and I had my cousin bring broccoli and I'm like, just do a little this, little this. And she brought it over. She's like, it's not good. I'm like, it's not good. What did you do? I'm like, I need to make a video for you so you know exactly what to do because people actually <gasps> do really need to be shown exactly what to do yeah. to make it taste the way someone would make a taste who has a little bit of a magic touch. So how much of yours is is training versus instinct, right? Because, you know, I, I come from a big family. Maybe I just downloaded watching mom do mm -hmm. something. I don't even know about it, but it's there. So Yeah, I love that question. I, I always say, like, I learned to cook as a baby in the kitchen. There's a photo mm -hmm. of me in a little bassinet chair on the kitchen shelf counter, like, basically hanging out completely um dangerously, my you. It's not like, <laughs> way to go mom, you know, in the 80s. Um, but I really grew up literally in the kitchen. So I feel like a lot of it is intuition. A lot of it is just watching her and then watching myself. I think when we go into that space, we get really hectic around the idea of we have to, a deadline, we have to get food on the table. You know, the kids are pulling at us, but it's really a moment to pause and think, what am I doing here? How can I be part of this experience? How can I allow this to be a, almost like a meditative moment for me? Mm. You know, and I say I really do find my meditation in the kitchen, and and it may not be like that the whole time. You know, the kids are screaming. There's a lot going on. But if you can take just a second to just take a breath and a pause and look around and be like, how lucky am I to be able to make this food for myself, for my family, for my loved ones? And just that little split second of tuning in can change the entire experience. You know what, you just, you got me thinking right now because there's this level of comfort that you exude when you're in the kitchen. And like now I go back, I just like hit rewind to little baby Robin hanging out, <laughs> just hanging out with mom, being yeah. in the kitchen. And that is not like a, like this off limits for boat in room in a, a household that is kind of uh, revolving around food and love and all those types of things. And a lot of things that I've noticed happening in our culture um, in the West is just fragmentation. It's like people don't even yeah. like you have Gatorades and baking soda in your refrigerator <laughs> and you don't even know what to yeah. do with that place. So it's interesting to me how that kind of string of like you being in mom's arm or in the bassinet just hanging out and watching that has now created this energy for you to just hang and yeah. feel comfortable there. Yeah. Right? And, and it shows in your food. Exactly. And thank you for that's so sweet. And and I was always begging to mix things, to be on the counters, mm. and my mom let me. And I should know when my mom married my dad, she didn't know how to cook. She took, I think, one or two cooking classes, called her family, and just figured it out because my dad loved food so much and loved to, you know, enjoy home cooked meals. It wasn't really an option. So mm. rather than it being a complaint, well, I don't do this, you know, we one thing that I work with a lot of my clients and in my coaching programs is changing your food story and also changing your cooking story. Like, what do you have there? Are you someone who tells themselves, I, I can't cook, I can't handle that, or, mm. you know, I'll never be good at that? Mm. And what is that? And where does that come from? And how can you change that story so that you can have a new one mm. and that you can feel as comfortable in the kitchen as I do? And maybe, you know, not that comfortable right away, but eventually. And I, I mean, you see, you know, the, the heart of, of your families in the kitchen, but where that, you know, spreads out to in so many different places as well. And I talk so much about digestive health and the gut and your your gut instincts. And, and it's not so much that my food is so specifically gut friendly. The fact that you've made it yourself is what makes it gut friendly, mm. right? Mm. There's some cool angles and like, you know, I keep the foods really simple and some things that naturally are healing. But really what I'm teaching you is to just start cooking for yourself, which no matter 
anything you're making pretty much from scratch from some healthy ingredients is going to be better for your belly than something that you're purchasing or finding or, you know, take out or whatever it is. Uh, you know, at the risk of sounding too hippy-dippy or spiritual, like there's something really powerful in you preparing a meal for yourself and your body responding in that way and being like, ah, nourishment, right? Mm -hmm. And that disconnect is something that you see all the time with your clients. Now, so yeah. real quick background mm -hmm. is you are a nutritionist. You've been doing a lot of courses. I, I mean, I, I watch your work. It's, it's awesome. What do you do for people on that kind of professional side yeah. of things? Yeah, so I'm a certified wellness expert and health coach. Um, and cooking is all self-taught, so there isn't really any accreditation there, just a lot of hours in the kitchen. But I started my own coaching practice about six years ago called Your Healthiest You. And I run coaching programs and a few different products that you know people can find me online. And sort of my angle is really you know starting with the belly, starting there, but making everything work for your life and also having you know, excuse me, it's a ton of fun at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. I go to music festivals, I travel all the time, and I still do this. I still find my way in. I still find my way to be healthy and be in my life. And that's what I teach my clients. And that's what I, you know, show them through my coaching programs. So there's different ways to work with me. And then I, have, of course, all the media and uh, TV work that I do and just love of being on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not shy about it at all. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> okay, so I'll, this is something that I really don't want to leave because most people, when they go to, say, a music festival, are just like, all right, I'm off this week, right? Like, whatever it is, drugs and alcohol or, you know, nachos with, like, the nasty yeah. cheese or, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter because I'm off and I'm playing, and so it's okay to punish my body because I'm here to have fun. And you have kind of intercepted that and, and brought the health with it. I really l would love to know how you're navigating those waters. That's, that's where I think a lot of people are just lost. Yeah. Totally. And I used to be just like that. I'd be like, I'm not thinking about it. You know, this is my week off. I would literally stop at a gas station and get Cheetos when I would never in my life mm. eat something like that. It's like, well, you know, it's a free for all. And then what happened was over the years, as my diet got cleaner and cleaner and I started to feel better and better in my body, the consequences of that sort of throw it all away attitude, even for just a couple days, started to get more and more severe. So mm. I would not just come back from a weekend like that and feel crappy for a day or two. I'd feel crappy for a week or mm. two, sometimes even a month. And it would affect the rest of my choices. And emotional eating is something that you know I'm always working on and have struggled with in the past. And it would sort of awaken that beast. Like, well, food would become something that was an unhealthy vice for me versus mm. this is how I nourish myself. This is my time in the kitchen. This is my time with my body. Mm. And it just would just send everything off the rails. And so as those consequences increase, I realized like, you know what? I gotta get serious here. I have I have some serious business to do. I have, I'm, I'm here to help the world, like literally help people get healthy in this really fun way. And if I want to do that, I have to get serious about how I'm treating my body. And so first of all, just that mind frame shift of, you know what, like you can't mess around with this anymore. You've got to mm -hmm. take better care of yourself, even in these, you know, previous throw it all away kind of weekends. And so definitely have a few tips for that. I always travel with a few things. I've literally packed bags of baby spinach in suitcases, carry-ons, just to make sure that I have greens in some form, even if I just end up nibbling it like mm. straight out of the bag. Um, I always travel with a jar of fermented vegetables, so raw, unpasteurized sauerkraut. Uh, I can get it through airport security. It's never been a problem. Really? Yeah. So usually in a jar, it's it's fine. Every time I've gotten it gotten it through and without refrigeration it's fine for a few hours usually I'm somewhere where there's a little mini fridge but even there I'll eat it in a day or two mm -hmm. it's not a big deal so a few staples like that and then you know the people around me expect this of me I, I always teach my clients like be the pain in the butt be the person that needs to find the healthier restaurant. Be the person that checks the menu before you say, okay, um, you know, is there something I can get here? Every Everyone else I know is going to, you know, Denny's or a fast food type place. I'm like, let me find a juice bar. And we're really lucky that pretty much almost all across America and a lot of places in the world, you can find so many of these amazing healthy mm -hmm. foods and just having as much of that as possible. And not to say you can't have a meal here or there that, you know, is whatever toss of the wind, but most of what you should be eating should be in line like this, and then you're just gonna feel so much better. So, okay, I'm in some random town USA, uh, and I'm on some work trip, and you know, the guys wanna stop and get grab a quick bite, and I rock into like a Denny's type mm -hmm. diner. Yeah. 
Uh, are we talking about iceberg lettuce <laughs> with no dressing? What are you know? What, right. What's my what are my options? Yeah. Here? So great question. So always think as as many nutrient dense vegetables as you can and clean protein. So a place like Denny's, a lot of times they will have a vegetable based soup. It may not be what you want, but it's going to be your best bet. Eggs are always a great bet. And like I said, just that mind frame of I'm going to be paying the butt and it's going to be okay. I'm going to be super kind to my waiter or waitress, leave them a great tip. As soon as they come over, I always say, you know what, I have a lot of dietary restrictions. Is it okay? Can you guys work with me a little bit? I'd really appreciate it. You know, if mm. I order something, tell me if it's gluten free. Can I do this? And I'll mm. say, can I just get two scrambled eggs and a side of the broccoli that you have, you know, here, but can you just steam it for me or just saute it with a little olive oil and that's it? Is that okay? I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Mm. And I always end up with that food. Mm. And then everyone looks at my food and they're like, oh my God, I wish I ordered that. Totally. I don't know why I'm falling asleep after this lunch, <laughs> right? And, that, and that's really it. It's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's easy to order the, like, the menu items. Um, you know, I, I caught myself the other day, we're flying back and, you know, there's all these different things and they had their like signature burger. And without even looking at the ingredients, my instinct was to be like, oh, the signature burger. Mm -hmm. And then I look and I'm like, oh, I can't eat that crap. Yeah. Right? And it's just, it's just easy. Yeah. And, and the, the aftermath isn't easy because it sucks that you feel like crap. Yeah. And so, um, is scrambled eggs and broccoli enough to satiate somebody? Yeah, if you're starving. If right, exactly. And it's it's a little bit too of like you may not get everything you need in that moment and you're going to be okay. And I always travel with snacks. I always have an avocado in my purse. I always have some sprouted almonds. But we're so nervous about, well, what if I'm hungry? What It's like, so you'll be a little hungry mm. for a couple hours. And obviously this doesn't apply to everybody. Know your body, but it's okay. Mm. You know, just that calming, if, if you tell yourself it's okay, it's going to be okay. Mm. Do you ever fast? Is that is that part of? You know, it, it's interesting. I've done a lot of experiments with juice cleanses and different kinds of blended smoothies, things like that. I do well if I need a bit of a break. If my digestive system's like, you know what, you just I just I hear that voice and you mm. need a little bit of a break. I do really well with blended and simple foods. So I'll do like a blended uh, detox soup. I have a great reboot soup recipe. I can give your. Uh, listeners, viewers, share that recipe with you. Um, cool. It's called Rockstar Reboot Soup. It's really good. And then I'll do some juices. I'll do some smoothies. So I do a little bit more of the solid foods, but in blended mm. form. And then I'll have like a half an avocado that day. And if I do a day or two like that, I feel really, really great. Mm. Um, and I actually want to go back to the that restaurant at that point that you were making yeah. about the burger. I really believe like every moment that we have when we make a choice like that leads us to the next right choice in our life. So if you had that quick flare up of, oh, I want that burger, but then you read the ingredients. Let's say you didn't listen and you ordered it anyways. That not listening to that gut hit that you got leads you to another moment where you don't listen to your instincts mm. and another moment. And before you know it, that's what's adding up to a crappy week, mm. right? Why do I feel off right now? Why are things not flowing the way that I want them to be? And then if you go back to that moment and you don't order the burger and you find something that says, you know, what's going to serve me better in that moment? That listening to that intuitive hit leads you to the next moment of that intuitive hit and the next moment. And that's how you add up your life to it looking the way that you actually want it to. Mm. And that it's, it's you don't think it would start with something so simple like a, the order of a burger, but right there is where we can go this way and where we can go that way. And I see it again and again. It's really funny because one of the people that was on this trip with us uh, made a bad food. I was watching this whole thing, made a bad food decision and then said, you know, I feel like a Coke. Right, because I just had all this crappy food, mm -hmm. so now it's like I need a Coke because we've all seen the the penny get shined by Coca Cola, right? Like somehow <laughs> it like works your digestion or something. And then after the Coke, it was like you know I really feel like a cigarette, and it's exactly what you were talking. About. I was watching yeah. this person just stumbling down this this yeah. hill, going, "Wow, that all started yeah. with a cheeseburger." Yeah, and even beyond the cigarette, um, well, I'll call my wife back later. Mm. Mm. Right? And then she's stressed out and then you end up in a fight because, oh, I just called her a day later. It wasn't a big deal. Why was that a big deal? And then you end up in a fight. And because you're in a fight with your wife, you end up being a little less than kind to one of your employees. And then your employee doesn't carry something through that was a really inspiring project the way that you expected them to. You see, like, it mm. goes even beyond what would be considered, you know, mainstream health into our lives. Mm. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, that's a big one. And I think that's where 
Uh, this like this string of pearls of bad decisions is where a lot of people end up, you know, 30 years later with obesity and diabetes and all these types of things, wondering how they got there. Yeah. But it all started with the standard American diet. It all started with things that were presuppositions, really, yeah. that you know, oh, this is fine. It's food. Yeah. Um, and food, you know, is is very different depending on the the quality and you know the, the sourcing and all that stuff. So I know you're big on gut health. I know that that's a, a big part of your shtick. I mean, you're obviously you know no, normal people don't travel around with sauerkraut. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but they should. So they're going to start. <laughs> they're going to start after this. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So. You know, most clients come to me and, you know, someone who works in, my pro in one of my programs, anything, and, and I look at what's going on with them, and 90% of the time it comes back to their gut. And in a sense, not even that there is necessarily IBS or a digestive disorder there, they're just not allowing their gut to do its, its very clear job, which is, which is to digest their food for them. So I find when clients come to me, the strongest place that I can always start with them is the simplest thing that we do no matter what I hopefully we're doing it which is chewing mm -hmm. so you know my little tweetable is your stomach doesn't have teeth because it doesn't and generally as a society we we chew something what like three four times maybe even that we chomp our food down and then we're putting all this stress on our bellies on our entire digestive system every single part of it by not properly chewing our food and so, so many of the women that I work with, and men too, uh, struggle around emotional eating and how they can really slow down and enjoy their food for nourishment's sake and be much more mindful around their meals. And the idea of mindful eating is wonderful, right? There's so many amazing principles I can teach there, but if I just start them with chewing, they're, they're eating much more mindfully without even trying to eat more mindfully. So when I say about chewing, I mean chewing to liquid. If you're the kind of person that wants to chew mouthfuls, you can, you know, 20 bites minimum, 25, 30 even be great. Uh, they say that there's some monks that have chewed to 100. I haven't met any of these monks. Maybe you mm -hmm. have met some. Um, I haven't, but <laughs> let me know if anybody meets one of these monks, but I've heard that. Mm -hmm. um, but just until complete liquid. And then what I found in turn is, you know, overeating starts to go away. You're eating less food naturally. You're slowing down and enjoying your food experience. And then, aha, all these digestive issues that you thought you may have had start to clear up. Mm. So heartburn, acid reflux, bloating, right? All my girls love the, ugh, I'm bloated after every single meal. Guess what? Just chew your food into liquid. I guarantee it will go away probably 80 to 90% of the time. That's huge because chewing is so inconvenient. I know. I, oh my it's god! It's so I, annoying. I gotta get this. I gotta get this turkey sandwich <laughs> down, and you know, drive to my next meeting while drinking my frappuccino, and that's like the world we live in. So yeah. it's just it's, that's a revolutionary statement that you're making. And so, how do we hack our lives to be able to stop and chew and realize that maybe all the the, the stuff that happens, you know, kind of downwind from there mm -hmm. is what's screwing up our lives in the first place? Okay, so great question. I teach my community to start to change their mind frame around eating a little bit in the sense that it might be really boring. Mm. Like you actually might take a while to eat your food and you might be sitting there bored to tears. You know what? Oh well. Mm. <laughs> I'd much rather you be a little bit bored for 20, 30, 40 minutes during your meal time a few times a day and feel amazing in your body and therefore amazing in your life than to you know just get through your food in five minutes. So first off, a mind frame change. Always start there. After that, you know we do need to do a little bit of schedule adjusting. You know most of us do walk around saying, well, food is an inconvenience. I just have 15 minutes. I have to get this down. And sometimes that will be the case, and there isn't anything you can do about that. I guarantee, though, most of the time, if you look at your schedule and start to think, I need 30 minutes of just pure consuming my food time, look at your schedule and schedule it like a meeting. Mm -hmm. Schedule it like something that would be really important. Think of it almost like more clinically, you know, if I had a doctor's appointment, how much time would that be? If I had a meeting with an investor, how much time would that be? Think of your food time as something way less, ex we're but we always have this idea that like food should be exciting, meal time should be so much fun. It's not always gonna be. So mm -hmm. if it's a chore that you need X amount of time for, how can you reframe your schedule a little bit for that? And then what another thing that I teach is, uh, you know, you might end up 
needing to divide up your meal. So you may only have a good 20 minutes to really choose something really well. Maybe you'll need to go back to whatever it was you were eating an hour later. Mm. Um, and you know, sometimes a smoothie can be great in those moments because you that's the best nourishment you can get in a smaller amount of window. So it's something that you do need to play around with a little bit, but I guarantee you starting with the mind frame shift, things will start to change around that. You know, I think of the last several meals that I've had with people in my world. And one of the things that I'd love your, your advice on is um, when you're having meals with your friends or people you haven't seen, it's just like, hey, Robin, so I know you're about to put that fork in your mouth, but <laughs> tell me about the last two years of your life. Yeah. And so you're trying to chew and talk and it's just like, how the hell do you do both? Yeah. I love talking about eating social situations because I'm very social. Mm -hmm. Those of you know me. Mm -hmm. um, I go out to dinner quite a lot. I'm at a lot of events. Like I said, a lot of travel. A lot of my meetings are around food. So one thing that um, I do when it comes to sharing, I want to give this tip first. I know you didn't quite ask this, but I want to mm -hmm. give it anyways. Is share, with sharing is I tell myself there's enough for everyone. I talk to myself. I, there's a conversation that goes on there that says, you can eat slowly, you can eat calmly, there's plenty for everyone. And I take a breath and I check in, I put my hand on my belly and I do a little bit more breathing that way and I look at what I'm about to eat. So I make sure that I'm present and that I'm feeling calm. Mm. And then I've also told people before, you know, there's so much that I want to catch up with you. Let me eat some of my food first. How about you tell me what's going on with you and then we'll come back to me. And I've actually just been like, you know what? I need a little bit of time to eat first. Wow. I do. That's so bold. I know. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's so great. I should do that too. I'm like, okay, let's spend five minutes and just breathe and eat and then we can, you know, gab it up. So, so this is something I know <clears throat> it's kind of off topic at this point, but it's, it's a big piece is the social phobias and the norms that we have around silence and saying no and, 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 and not giving someone what they need in that immediate moment. It's like, oh, they asked me a question. Let me just like mm. swallow this like chunk of steak real quick so I could answer them and, and damage my digestion, and damage my health. And it's just like uh, unraveling that. And like what I'm hearing is you're giving people permission to do mm -hmm. that. And it's, I don't think that's something very many of our listeners even think about. Yeah. It's really so much of my message is about being as you as humanly possible and what that really means. And that means listening to whatever it is that you need in that moment. And that might be permission to put your fork down. It might mean, you know, giving yourself permission to say, actually, can you give me, you know, just I'm super hungry. Can I just have a couple minutes to dig into some of my food here? And and telling people what you need always you know, in the kindest way possible, but when it comes from your heart and it comes from your gut, people really respond to that. Have you ever had a conversation with someone where mm. you're just purely in your knowing of you and what you need and you're speaking from that place and living from that place and things just get so much cooler mm -hmm. around you? It's, we, it depends on the company you keep too and I'm sure this has maybe shifted the dynamics of who you enjoy having meals with as well because I have the people that you know are drinking martinis and pounding you know roast beef sandwiches at lunch and like you know foods flying out of their mouth while they're talking and you know back in the day like these are people that you know we like business associates and mm -hmm. stuff and I just don't like having lunch with them anymore because it's just it's too raw right. right and you know I come from a monastic tradition where mm. you do chew a hundred times and I hated that part but it was you know it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was it was good medicine but you do chew and it's like the the sacredness of the actual meal experience is powerful Right, and yeah. between those two worlds is somewhere where most of us should probably live is some, yeah. some some semblance of sanity, and so at home, if you're at home having a meal and maybe it's just you and your family, you can maybe set up a ritual around mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But outside, and you're out some, at some restaurant, then you really got to take it with you. Yeah. Huh? And my husband actually eats really fast. He grew up with two siblings. Uh, champion swimmers, like tons of physical activity. Everyone was always hungry, big family. And he eats really fast with me. And it's, it's, that is my greatest teacher because it teaches me to just breathe, stay in my body, stay mm. with me, stay calm. You know, it increases, it's like my muscle for that has gotten so much stronger because I practice it almost all of my mm. meals. So even if you're dining with, you know, those people that it's really raw and really has that frantic energy, 
you use it as an opportunity to mm. stay with you, to stay in your body. And then your body responds back to you, right? It doesn't freak out after that meal. That gas isn't there. The bloating isn't there. You know, all the burping, belching, like all those really cute things that we do after meal times <laughs> <laughs> start to dissipate. <laughs> that work. Yeah, and that's one thing I hear all the time from people is just like fatigue after meals um, is just a norm, right? Yeah. But that's like you look at a baby and they eat a meal. Like I was watching my son this morning. He had breakfast and then like, you know, watch out. You know, he's barreling over the dogs and just boom. Because that's what food's supposed to do is provide you energy. And so, you know, it's become so normal for us to feel tired and cranky and bloated and yucky after the meals that I think a lot of our listeners need to understand that that's not their birthright. Right. This is something that will take time to shift to. Like I always mm. tell people like you, this, you've been eating like this your whole life, right? So while we're even talking about, you know, I know with so many of your, your listeners, you speak so much about what you're specifically eating, how we're eating is mm. going to take some time to shift too. So, you know, if you catch yourself not chewing in a meal, put your fork down. Like mm. the second that you catch yourself like, oh, okay, take a breath, look at your plate of food and say, I'm starting from right here mm. and know that this will take time. And maybe you just, you know, have one meal each week that feels really calm and really mindful. You know, maybe there's only one lunch hour in a week that you can take. Um, and maybe that's only even on a Sunday. Maybe you can't during your week, but you start mm. with something. And then eventually over time it builds and it builds and your muscle, that intuitive muscle builds and gets stronger and stronger. And mm. this has taken me years. It mm. took me about three years to really be chewing my food. And now it's taking me, I'd say, about six years to have that voice be even stronger that says, slow down, calm down, you know, what is it that you need? What feels best for you and your body right mm. now? It almost seems like our society has the time dial turned all the way to the right. And it's just like bang, 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 like rolling down the white water of a river. And it's just like you, you're completely out of control. And what you're saying is, Give yourself the permission, and it might take a minute, but eventually you can be riding, you know, on top of that water and enjoying enjoying it way oh, more. That sounds so good, right? <laughs> and and everything in line will start to will start to fall in line with that. Mm. You'll see other things in your life. It's like, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Start with just your own little little baby pocket that you can find and then that time starts to expand because you meet mm. people that you they seem to have all the time in the world and they feel really calm and way less stressed and you know find time for meditation and and starting with just your meal time that's where all that's that can start mm. to shift to one of the reasons why the monastic traditions really really emphasize um mindfulness around eating is because of the fact that it's so rote. It's this thing that we do three to five times mm -hmm. a day um, that we fall asleep to. So yeah. it's like, ah, bah, 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 oh, I, yeah, I, did I eat? I don't remember, <laughs> right? And, yeah. and it's just this completely mindless place. And so that's why also, you know, breathing is something mm -hmm. that meditation is anchored to because it's something that we do that we forget about. So forgetting about what you're doing while eating is a uh, terrible thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's led to a lot of the problems that you're talking about and chewing and digesting and all that. And so I, I love some of the sage wisdom that you're dropping here. It's really, you know, the practical advice of slowing down is something that, you know, it might not be what our audience actually wants to hear because, you mm. know, what we, what I really want is a, is a triple Frappuccino Express <laughs> latte, you know, slam dunk, let me, you know, go faster. But on the other end, we're all getting sick. On the other yeah. end, we're all depressed. On the other end, we're all, why are we so sick? And if you look at all these rituals, what you're talking about is kind of like where we come from. Yeah. And even, you know, if you get stronger in that practice of asking your body what it needs, let's say you're online for Starbucks, and I've done this online for Starbucks, I will literally put my hand on my belly and say, take a breath and say, what do you need? Mm. And your mind might get really busy with the frappuccino, right? That frappuccino, I want that frappuccino. But if you take a breath and you drop in and you go in and go deeper and say, what's there? What do I really need? You're going to hear a voice mm. and it's going to have much better advice than anything I could even tell you mm. in that moment. It's just those little, little touch points where we ask and then we hear it and then we listen. Mm. And those steps at first can feel like a lot, but again, over time you just get better and better at that. And I know you've been spending a lot of time writing a book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, a, a very challenging proposition. You really have to stop and check in and really kind of 
cultivate your wisdom and cook up the, 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 the advice that's coming mm -hmm. out. So I know it's coming out this winter mm -hmm. um, and uh, you've been at this for a very long time. And so tell us a little bit about the book. I don't want to spoil it or anything, but what are you, what are you working on? Thank you, yeah. It's been an incredible process. I, everyone I speak with who's ever written a book, they're like, get ready for the craziest year ever. And it's it teaches you so much about yourself. And what I'm happiest about the book is that it really is everything I say and everything I want to say all in one place. And really how I teach and how I see my students, my clients, my community thriving. Um, so really it is a, like a gut to gut book. So how to calm your gut, heal your gut, soothe your gut, um, and then also live from your gut. Mm. So what are the foods that you want to focus on? What are, what are some of those dietary staples that you want to bring in in a really fun, easy, accessible way? And then how, through healing of your gut, can you get more to your gut instincts and your gut intuition and live your life from that place? I love that. I love that. So and have healing, cookbook and, 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 and it's got <laughs> and a have, cook. Yeah, so it's it's about like a third, a half um, how to guide, four week plan, and then the rest is full cookbook. So it's a little crazy. I do, I you know one one would have been plenty. I decided to do both at once because you know we're not. Hmm overachievers or anything. Not at all, no. not at all. No. You know what's interesting though is I hang out with a lot of overachievers and you have a very uh, refreshing message which is um, stopping time, right? Which is uh, a powerful, powerful lesson for modern humans, right? Because yeah. we're so time compressed. Yeah. And so wow. your ability to slow down and stop time inside of meal time and inside of all these other things gives you the capacity to be able to do more when you are doing because you're not uh, simultaneously trying to digest undigested food, simultaneously yeah. trying to deal with bloating and all these other things. It's yeah. like you actually take that time and then you get more efficient. And I've seen you. And just just for our listeners, I'm just I'm peeling it back a little bit, is Robin is one of the people, one of the few people I know that is constantly having fun and going to music <laughs> festivals and enjoying life. Yeah. And that's that's a really serious thing because a lot of us forego all that and we're just like, ah, you know, I got to work now, you know, bah, you know, who's got time for that? But like you're going to music festivals, you work hard, you play hard and you take care of yourself. And it's just, it's a really powerful balance that I don't see in people in our world. And, you know, we've, we've met, I mean, the health, the health and wellness celebrities come through the health bridge a lot. And a lot of the, a lot of the people, no names to be mentioned, are just too damn busy to yeah. take care of themselves sometimes. Yeah. And um, I, I want to honor you for, for actually, you know, taking the time to do it. Thank you. It's, it's funny, you really, you know, and what you were saying about this ability to stop time early, you really hit on something for me and something that I don't speak about often, but I lost my father uh, to cancer when I was 17. Mm. And I think ever since then, well, first of all, I, I, I get things on a level that, you know, a, a child of that age isn't supposed to. Like, I really do get how precious life is in every single moment and those moments with our families and our connection and even the mo our moments in our work when we're feeling great and we're feeling just so into whatever it is that we're creating. And I don't think that I realized what I was doing was trying to almost stop time but or really just really appreciate time. Mm. And this is how I've been doing it. First of all, realizing like how special and how precious it is and then finding that way in for myself, which is just something as simple as starting with a meal or stopping with, you know, that moment where you're asking your body what it needs or, you know, what does my soul re need right now? Is it to work this weekend or is it to go to this music festival? Mm -hmm. And every time that I check in with that, I feel like the universe rewards me. Mm -hmm. And I end up getting the ex exact experience that I need and whatever project I had at work that I might have been stressed about, something falls into line for it. It's like every time I listen to that true Robin essence and breathe into that more and more and more, my life looks more and more the way that I want it to around me. It, it sounds paradoxical. It's like the old, um, and this quote, I don't know if it's accurate because it's been attributed to Gandhi, but I've also seen it attributed to like nine other people. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I have a particularly busy day, so I'm going to meditate mm -hmm. two hours instead of my cus yeah. a cust customary one hour yeah. today. And it's, it doesn't make sense, 
but somehow paradoxically it works out. Like when you take the time for you, the entire universe conspires to kind of open doors and things happen around you. And that's, you know, the mystics have been saying this for a very long time. And for you, I mean, whether you had history or whether this, you know, cancer and loss of father event kind of forced your hand, mm -hmm. it puts you in that mm -hmm. state. And now the appreciation of life and time and all those things really reflect in your work. And it's powerful, you know, there's what's, what's really missing in our world is, you know, there is a disconnect between health and psychology mm -hmm. and spirituality and all these things that used to all come under one roof, yeah. right? And so if you don't think of eating, say, as a sacred event, you're really missing it. Yeah. Go to church all you want, you're scarfing down a yeah. cheeseburger and going to church, you're wondering why you can't, you know, sing your hymns or whatever. Yeah. And I love that you just said you're missing it, like you are. And we don't think of, you know, something as simple as sitting down to eat your apple and look around and you know earlier when we were hanging out we just went outside and put our faces in the sun like mm. those are the moments that's where it starts mm. so even if you're at, in a cubicle right now and you're at a desk and you're at a job that you're unhappy with and you're feeling super stressed can you just take a second to just sit there and breathe and maybe say a prayer or just even if that's too much for you just take a breath and breathe into your belly and breathe into your back and breathe into your sides and feel and allow that change within you just from that simple little thing mm. and then doing that more and more and more things start to change mm. pretty rapidly actually mm -hmm. yeah it might you just might have a flicker like a glimpse of it but that's enough to want for you to want a little bit more. It's yeah. like that, that nibble of the forbidden fruit. You're like, wait a minute, that was good. That felt mm -hmm. real, right? Yeah. That's not what a Dr. Pepper will do for you. Right. <laughs> and that's coming from your gut and that's mm. living from your gut. Mm. Love it. So your book comes out in January. Um, I know you're still working on a title and yeah. all that. So just how can people find you? Because eventually your book will manifest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you can go to my website, robinucalis.com. So it's R-O-B-Y-N then Y-O-U-K-I-L-I-S. Love it. Find everything there. Love it. <laughs> Sister, love you. So Thank good you. to see you. So good to see you. And thanks for, thanks for joining. Thanks and for I, I will, I'll definitely, definitely keep up with uh, what you're doing. And um, I'll think you. You have to run fast now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then when we have a meal, it'll be really quiet and boring. And you and I will smirk because we know we're doing it right. <laughs> Maybe we'll film it. We'll, we'll film our really boring meal. You guys you can just watch us like have a really boring slash awesome meal together. So do you, if you lose count on like your, your chewing, do you have to start over? Yes. <laughs> Double oh time. Oh my God, I think I was a 37. Double time. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. You too. Thanks for being here. Uh, Dr. Pedram Shojai, The Health Bridge. We'll see you next time. Thank you.